if you are like me, I cannot stand not turning over every irradiated rock in Fallout 76. Or maybe you like rare apparel, or rare recipes, or maybe you just need caps. If so, this video is definitely for you. We will be diving into an easily missed vendor who sells rare apparel and rare plants from Barry Mentats to the Hunter's Long Coat, so stay tuned. Fallout 76 is full of hidden details including hidden vendors from Graham to the Scavenger Trader. Today we will be going over the Scavenger Trader, why you need to find her, and also get into how and where to find her as well. Now the Scavenger Trader can come in many forms so let's uncover all of her forms per se. The Scavenger Trader version you need to be on the lookout for is the one who sells apparel as she can sell rare apparel like the Hunter's Long Coat. Now, the second most sought after version of the scavenger trader can appear as just trader, and she will be selling Kim's and rare recipes, such as berry mentats, grape mentats, and even more. Now, if you know anything about berry mentats, this can be a very hard plan to get a hold of, especially if you're not part of the enclave, so finding her can be essential to getting the recipe. Of course, you could always buy the recipe and then sell it for a double profit in your own vending machine, since so many players do not even know this vendor exists. Recently, Bethesda added that she could also sell the Healing Salve recipes as well. So, if she's in the Cranberry Bog, she'll have a chance to actually sell the Cranberry Bog Healing Salve recipe, which is hard to get. She's, she's a master wearing many hats, so to speak. Let's get into her other versions you may encounter. Sometimes when you find her, she'll be selling weapons, and with this version of her, she actually will be selling all the plans for the bow and the compound bow, and that includes the mods. The scavenger trader, as she's called, can also sell food, junk, and armor. If this is the case, you can always check her notes and her apparel that she's selling as well. Even though it's not the right scavenger trader, she still will be sometimes selling the green hood or the wrapped cap. Now, neither of these are considered rare, but they are highly sought after since they complete three of the rarest apparel ensembles in the wasteland. The green hood goes with the leather coat and the traveling leather coat, and the wrapped cap actually goes with the tattered field jacket. Neither of these drop with their coordinating outfits, which makes them highly sought after. I mean, you have to complete your ensemble, right? We will be going over every piece of rare clothing she offers with a full showcase at the end of the video because some players may just want to learn the location so that way they can get recipes and not the rare clothing. But when you do encounter her, you do need to know what you're looking for, correct? A few things you should know before we get started. The trader or scavenger trader is a random encounter, which means she has a set spawn location. However, it is a mixed bag of encounters, so you could get any of the different versions of the scavenger trader we discussed previously. To maybe even getting a storyteller, enemies like blood eagles, mongrels, or you could get nothing. Literally nothing. So this is not always an easy task. You will need to try multiple locations, multiple times, and even on multiple servers. Worst part is, sometimes you find the scavenger trader that sells apparel and she has literally no rare pieces of apparel for you. So even when you do find the right scavenger trader, you may leave empty handed. Now if you have friends, they can also come and check her and their inventory will be different from yours. Even better, is if you have friends and you also have multiple characters, as long as one player holds her, you can check her inventory on other characters as they too will get a different inventory. So basically you will come into the world as one of your friends hold it and you'll bring in your other character and check her again, leave, get your other character and check her again, just as long as it's different characters that you're actually doing this with and somebody stays with her. If no one holds her, she can disappear because random encounters rotate approximately every 20 to 30 minutes. So if you have multiple locations, you can possibly never have to switch servers because you'll start at one location and then just keep on working your way back around and hopefully it'll be in enough time lapsed that you'll have a new encounter. So I will be showing you 11 places the scavenger trader can spawn and this will include the directions so you don't get lost. And obviously if there's anything nearby that is a bonus, I will throw that in as well. So be on the lookout for those. Now, most of these will be in no particular order. I am going to show you a couple that I have really good luck with. The first one's not too far from Fallout 76, and that is Anchor Farm. You'll just go right up the road, and then on the left you'll see a camp, and sometimes she will be there. 
Location number two is right up from Anchor Farm, and that is the West Virginia Lumber Company. And when you spawn in here, you will actually encounter some enemies. It's usually a couple robots or ghouls or super mutants. And then you'll just start running down the road. I do have a very high success rate in finding the scavenger trader here. That is why this is my number two location, not just because it's right up from Anchor Farm. As you see, you will actually just go down towards the water, and she will be at another campsite. She's normally at a campsite. This next location is by far one of my favorites. It has a bunch of extras down there. There's a couple bobbleheads that spawn down here, a couple magazines locations. It even has a chance to actually spawn a power armor frame and a fusion core. So you can come down here and look for a bunch of different things. Now, I do get a lot of super mutants and floaters down here, so just be aware of that. I'll go over all the different locations that you'll see the bobbleheads and the magazines. Magazine should spawn right here, and another bobblehead will spawn right here, and there's one here. Loads of wood out front here, and another magazine right here, and a fusion core. Location number four is going to be Radiation Rumble. Now, you'll need to actually look for this open hole that's inside of the area. And you can see we actually spawn in over there. But you're going to come through this way. That's the actual section you'll look for. You'll run up the hill here, and you'll be looking for a campsite. And as you can see right here, is the campsite doesn't look like up oh, there she is and is she the right one and she is the right one let's go over and see what she actually has two hunters long coats nice location number five I have a pretty good success rate with two and that is Slocum's Joe that is not too far from the wayward so you'll spawn in here. I often actually write down the road when I spawn in. I'll normally hear Graham talking. So Graham and Chally walk right through there as well. But you just want to hop over the river here. And I do find a lot of enemies here. It's normally dogs or, or wolves. And sometimes you find the scavenger trader. Location number six is actually Silva Homestead. Now this is where Project Beanstalk actually occurs. It's a great event, by the way, over here in the forest region. When you spawn in, you'll actually just turn around to your right, and you just kind of go back, and she'll be right there behind you. I did not know this for the longest time, but she is definitely there, and you can definitely find her here. This location is obviously one that everybody knows, so we'll go ahead and get started. It is the Wayward, so here's the Wayward. You'll want to go to the side of it on the left. Do not go over the bridge. You're just going to be heading straight down where the creek bed is there. And that big tree right there is the one I kind of use as a marker. If you have bats, you can kind of start hopping right here and see if there's any enemies there. So that way you don't even have to go over there and interact with them. But we have the scavenger trader. This location here, I have not had much luck actually seeing the scavenger trader here. But it is a free fast travel location. So we'll go ahead and go over it anyway. That is the rusty pick. So there is the rusty pick there. You just want to head up and over this hill here that's in front of you. I use this rock here as my point to look because sometimes you can jump down you have no idea where you're at I don't know how I do it but I do it pretty frequently anyhow this is where she can possibly spawn at I normally get nothing or a bunch of enemies now there is salt and pepper and wood here most of the time and there's also the fireman's helmet. Now this used to be a big deal this next location I go to frequently not actually the location where the scavenger trader is I literally learned this location just because of this video the research I did and I've come down here all the time and it is Camden Park so it's not too far from the rusty pick so if you have to be there and you're going to Camden Park maybe you want those Mr. Fuzzy tokens this location seems a lot more violent 
in my opinion. The enemies seem to be worse. There's a Yao guy that shows up here. I have yet to actually see the scavenger trader here. I've only had enemies or nothing. And the other thing is, is you can actually um, aggro the enemies that are right there. And then there is this really cool Jaws dolphin here. I mean, who doesn't like seeing the Jaws dolphins? But anyway, the actual location is right here. Just like in real life, the locusts are super loud. But this is it, right here. Last time I came down here, there was a big old Yao guy that charged at me. I didn't even know it was going to happen. There was some dead people, and all of a sudden he came out from behind the tent. Anyway, so this is not that far. This is where it's at on the actual map, is down here. Now, while you're down at Camden Park, you can also look for three magazines and four bobbleheads, and I will take you through all of those. Now, there's enemies here, and the first magazine will be laying right here. A lot of times, it's face down, so you have to be very careful, and oftentimes, it kind of bounces around, so it could be anywhere out here. And then the next one will be a bobblehead, and that will be right around the corner. Now, this is not too far from the scavenger trader location. Just be careful not to aggro these bad guys, and the bobblehead can spawn right there. The next one is another bobblehead, so this would be bobblehead number two. Now it could spawn right in here. And the next location will be a bobblehead and a magazine. Head around back. A bobblehead can spawn right there. There's normally a stealth boy there, and a magazine can spawn right there. And then if you go up top, more enemies, of course. Also, a couple fusion cores down here as well. One of them was right there, the other one is behind you at the first bobblehead location. But if you run up the side of this, and jump up and over. Now this has been kind of glitched out, but there's normally a bobblehead right in here. You can see, normally it's right, right there, but you can see I'm already starting to pick up the marksman rifle and stuff like that, so you might have to kind of move around and see if you can find it. I don't know if it's really worth the effort at this point while well, it's glitched. But I mean, if you're going to run all the way up here, you might as well check, right? And then this is the last magazine location as well, and it will spawn right there. This next location is also a free travel location, and that is Foundation. So you'll spawn in right here. Now this one's a little bit of a jog. So what you're looking for is this fork in the road right up here. And it looks like we got something that's dead. Yeah, some cultists. So we got some dead cultists here. I have yet to find the scavenger trader here. For this location, I'm actually going to start right here at the Gorge Junkyard. Now, this isn't a place you can fast travel to because it's a workshop, but you can actually fast travel there if you take over the workshop. And most people will probably know this workshop, which is why I'm actually starting here to begin with. But the best place to spawn in is probably going to be right here at the Wilson Brothers. You will encounter enemies as you come down here towards the 59 sign. So let's go right on over here and I will show you. So here is the junkyard here that you can take over. And you just need to run right up the road here. And as you can see, it's already starting to load in. You see the Grafton sign, it's like right, right there. And lo and behold, look who is here. There is now only seven outfits that you can get that are rare from the scavenger trader, and the most sought after is this one right here, which is the hunter's long coats. I'm not going to go too slow with this, just because of the simple fact that it will take forever. And most people will see these a lot. They're not as rare. They are rare, but not as rare as some of the other items. Next up we have the skein red and green outfit. Now this is the same as the other ones that you can find or the one that you can make with the skiing outfit, except it's red and green. For outfit number three, we have the Longshoreman. Now this one is very sought after as well. Now there is a lot of detail in this one, so I'll be zooming in and zooming out, so just bear with me.
Next up, we have the gray fisherman's overalls. Next up is the clean straight jacket. A lot of people don't like this one. This is one of my favorites because nothing shouts mental health like a clean straight jacket in the middle of the wasteland. Next we have the clean spacesuit. The helmet is now part of Spooky Scorch, so it's not as rare anymore. Last but not least, we have the winter jacket and jeans. Hopefully this guide has given you plenty of locations to actually find the scavenger trader and you can get that highly coveted hunter's long coat. Please make sure to give me a big Vault Boy thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video or learned something new. And also consider nuking that subscribe button on the way out. I do want to give a huge shout out to all my channel members, the Death Claws. Without you, none of this would be possible. I'd like to take a moment to welcome Michael Barnett to the Baby Death Claws. Thank you for becoming a channel member, Michael.